mentioning the state of Michigan. And he was mentioning how that you can make the state into your hand. Well, Joe, you'll always be a Texan, buddy. You tell those folks up in Michigan that once they can make a waffle out of their state, they're legit, okay? <laughs> I know how much time I've got, okay? And uh, I wouldn't take back anything that we did today. I wouldn't do it. And uh, communion Sundays usually go a little longer than normal, and that's okay. Um, but I want to share a message with you today. And I've, I've made this pledge that every communion Sunday I'm going to preach on the cross. The cross has become old fashioned. Um, I was talking with Seth the other day about different ministers that are in the church today. And we tend to rally around ministers that we, we like and we prefer their message. This guy's too positive. That guy's too negative. This guy talks too much about healing. That guy talks too much about deliverance from demons. This guy, this guy, this lady, whatever. I believe that the gospel is too big for any one of us to completely do. I believe to hear the gospel that you hear from many different outlets, many different ministers. Call them specialists. And with a lot of ministries, the cross has become antiquated. The cross has become old-fashioned. And the cross is anything but that. The cross is your hope. And each, each first Sunday, I'm going to be preaching on the significance of, significance of the cross, the power of the cross, the necessity of the cross, and why you should cling, as the song says, <clears throat> to that old rugged cross. When I think of the cross, you think of the scene, there, there are depictions of that scene. None of them capture what really happened there that day. I can't think of a darker day when even creation mourned as the sky darkened, the sun eclipsed, and thunder, and the earth shook, lightning, midday. What a, what a terrible, terrible hour that was. It was a typical battlefield that was filled with confusion and what they call the fog of war was taking place out there where his own disciples except for John went and hid for fear of their own lives and there's many historic battlefields that stir the human soul especially on July the 4th we have Gettysburg where thousands and thousands of U.S. soldiers died. Both sides were soldiers that were Americans. What a devastating battle Gettysburg was, where it actually took place around a town where these men met brothers and fought and killed each other. Normandy, a battlefield that moves my soul and emotions. When many of these United States soldiers, as they left these landing craft, some of them were just, the whole landing craft was wiped out as the door was opened up because of the machine gun fire. Blood was spilled on those shores for freedom, to preserve American freedom and to save Europe. What a gruesome place Normandy was, a battlefield. Iwo Jima, we've seen the images of Iwo Jima. Every one of these soldiers were eventually killed that raised this flag in World War II. Iwo Jima is a, is a, a moving tribute. When, we, when you go to Arlington Cemetery and you see that statue, or wherever you've seen it, it is moving because of the United States Marines and the losses that took place in taking that mountain and clearing out the tunnels at Iwo Jima. And then we have another battlefield. It's called the Cross. This is a place of suffering and shame. This is a place where all these soldiers I've mentioned that fought in all these battles, their sins were here. Where Jesus, who was perfect and without sin, the Son of God himself, came and bore our sin and our sorrow 
So we could carry his burden, which is easy and light. This battlefield is a current battlefield. It is a battlefield that is not extinct like the other battlefield. They're, they're, they're not monuments. This battlefield goes on. The cross is still a place of decision. It's not old-fashioned. It is not worn out. It is still a place where lives are saved. It is still a place where people reject Christ. Is at the cross. Mark chapter 8 and verse 34. Then he called the crowd to him along with the disciples and said... Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Church, it's not the strip club that is our enemy. It's not the town drunk that is our enemy. It is not the Supreme Court's ruling that is our enemy. It is ourselves who are our enemy. We are responsible for the decay of this country. And as I said last week, the church is responsible. If the church had not blinked at the face of Satan, we wouldn't be facing these things that we're facing now. The church began to decay before America did. It, was, it will always be yourself. It is always our responsibility. And if we accept responsibility, we have the power to change. And the cross is still a place where change takes place, where battles are fought. Self must be crucified. Self must be denied. Self is denied at the cross, not expressed. We live in a, in a nation, in a, in a land where it's all about self-expression. Be true to self. When Christ said, deny self, crucify self, we've got to get this message of the cross. That is the message of the cross. There are churches that preach, celebrate yourself. When the cross says, deny yourself, give yourself, crucify that which is enmity against God, which is our sinful nature. Because of false doctrines coming from religious organizations, posing as churches, we have this conflict. We have this crisis that is amongst us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now this is back then. They're even more now. The spirit of Antichrist, as Paul said, is with us now. And the spirit of Antichrist has infiltrated churches, congregations, denominations, and movements across the the world, And they make comments that we have bought and believed as doctrine. Here's one of them. All sin is equal. Sin is sin. Friend, listen. Sin is not sin. While all sin will get you into hell, all sin is not equal. People, we are not equal. In, 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 if you're a minister of the gospel, the Bible tells us, Joe, Dad, we're going to be judged we're going to be judged more harshly and more severely than those who aren't called into the ministry. There is a higher responsibility on us than anyone else. God has justice, real justice and equity. There are sins that are abominable. There are sins. Lying will get you to hell. Lots of, every, every sin will get you to hell. But not all sin is equal. Here's another one. The Bible is not fully accurate. I was dealing with someone recently that did not believe that the Bible was fully true. The Bible is fully accurate. My belief and my faith says that if God has not gotten a book that we can depend on and trust by now, he's not a good father. Your heavenly father has done that. Men and women have died for this to be in your hands. And I trust them. I trust them. I trust the years and years. I trust the apostles. I trust those spiritual fathers that have gone before us. The men and the, and, and the women who attended this church before you were born. They laid a foundation here. And they believe what we believed. They trust God's word to be wholly inerrant. Friends, this is a big deal. You'll be shocked at the people that don't believe this to be fully true. You can go in and you can quote Paul. And they don't respect Paul who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. They don't respect many of the scriptures. 
They don't believe. And friend, if the Bible is not the inerrant word of God, we've got a lot of problems that we're facing. And many people do believe that it's not. They believe, they believe there are errors. And because of this, we have the, the, the perversions that are taking place in the church today. They say also that homosexual is not a sin. That God made people that way. God doesn't create sin. They also believe that if you're good, that you can go to heaven. It's going to be okay. No, we're saved by faith through grace. That's how, I'm saved by grace through faith. That's how we're saved. It's not you being good. It's not you not being a terrible person or a murderer. There are truths that the Bible teaches that man is not teaching. And we go back to the cross and we find these truths. And as if I can use what our founding father says, to be self-evident. That God's word is true. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 16. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned, watch this, only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him but we have the mind of Christ you don't need to raise your hand but have you been frustrated when you've been discussing scriptures and doctrine with people who don't believe God to be fully true and you become frustrated because they're just not getting it well they can't get it unless it comes from the Holy Spirit and this is what Paul is teaching us here He's saying, you're going to get truth, you're going to understand truth, because the Spirit has taught you. And the world sees the cross and all this stuff as foolishness. You Christians, you just need a crutch to lean on. You need to understand the reality. There's nothing afterwards, and there's many ways. If there is a God, there's many ways to Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are dying. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And then you got people. I'm going to admit something I said last night, hon. I was around people last night, and I was very frustrated. And I, I told Rhonda, they weren't, I said, I just don't like some people. Here I am, a minister of the gospel, supposed to have a heart for the lost, and I just can't stand people sometimes. They can be so dumb and ridiculous. <laughs> I believe the Holy Spirit was saying, all right, Johnson, remember who you are. You know. But there's a frustration, and you want to say, why don't you get it? Well, the reason they don't get it is they can't without the Holy Spirit. And the only way that's going to happen, and here, boy, here it comes. You're going to have to pray for them, the ones you don't like. You're going to have to love the ones you don't like. You're going to have to do exactly what Jesus did for you on the cross. Father, forgive David because he doesn't understand what he's doing. Amazing love, how can it be, the song says. Grace really is amazing, isn't it? The cross is the secret. And until they can take this, not just being jewelry or hangings on the wall or a sign that chases vampires away, but when they can realize the power 
when they can realize the authority and the redemption in this battlefield that is an active battlefield. The blood of Jesus stained this earth and has never been washed away. It remains. It saved me when I was a kid. <coughs> it saved my dad when he's a mean old dude in Tyler, Texas. Atheistic and stubborn. It saved some people. I look at Andy. Andy, you told me about what you were before Jesus came into your heart. Skeptical. You know, born a skeptic and had a relapse. Angry at lots of things. And he accepted Christ. And I'm telling you, that, it's a changed man. Delmer Critchfield, who my, my brother called a fist with eyes. One of these days, I'm going to get Delmer to come here. This guy that brought hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children to church. Delmer, mean, crass, but when Jesus came in his heart, Tara, Joe, you know what I'm talking about, changed that guy's life forever. Only the cross can do that. If you're at Gettysburg, if you're at Normandy, if you were... If you were at, um, what was the other battle? I said, Iwo Jima. You come away from there with a syndrome. Shell-shocked. You come away from there with battle fatigue syndrome. This anxiety. But you come away from the cross with joy, with peace and satisfaction. What a difference in the battlefields. Because victory is still being won at the cross. The cross is a confrontation. It is where we change from self to Christ. The cross is where we move from death to life. It's where we deny our logic and we walk by faith and not by sight. The cross is where our pride becomes humility. When we look at the cross and say, it's you, it's not me. The universe revolves around you and not me. And we bring self and we offer it. And it is nailed along with our fences to the cross. Where arrogance becomes submission. Where self is crucified. Had a question I had for somebody the other day. I said, describe salvation to me. I said, love. Compassion. Forgiveness. I kept waiting. I said, I'm still waiting for repentance. Friend, you can't have salvation without repentance. And when you repent, that's when the nails go in. To self. Because when I repent, I'm saying, I am wrong and you are right. I am small and you are great. That is the key to repentance and salvation. When you humble yourself before God and say, God, I need help. We live in a world of self-made men and women. Independent. Pride wells up. On this Independence Weekend, I want you to remember something. America needs God. We are not truly independent. We are dependent upon God. It is He who is responsible Joe, for the greatest Navy in the world. It is he who is responsible for the freedom that we experience through democracy. It is he that is responsible, farmers, that your crops are good and that we are the world's breadbasket. It is he that is responsible that this country leads the world in technology even though we trail behind Asian countries in math scores. That beats me. I, I don't understand that. Outside of God's blessings. We are dependent, this independent nation, on God. And as we read together in Scripture, we need to be careful. There's a song that says, 
What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. And it goes on, it says, floods of joy, oh my soul. And we used to sing this at first at Sigmund Griffin. Like the sea billows roll. And that singer, the, 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 the leader would sing till his breath left his body. Anybody else ever done it like that? The musicians will be just, where is he doing? Since Jesus came into my heart. Mark 8, 34 again. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Kids, when I prayed over you, I prayed for obedience and submission. Not just for your parents, but to your maker. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I have to live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Our only hope is the cross. It's not old-fashioned. It hasn't lost its power. You must experience the cross because on it hangs your answer. And that is the truth. Bow your heads with me and let's pray. Father, we receive your word today. And we agree that we need help. Lord Jesus, on this active battlefield, we continue to wage war against ourselves. Father, when we come to the cross and see what you did for us so we didn't have to experience that death and that shame and that hopelessness, when God your Father had to turn his back on you because of me, my shame, my disgrace, and my sin. I appreciate that. You deserve more than what I just said. But you accept it because you're so much higher than I am. Father, I thank you for that. I cleave to your cross. And I thank you for its regenerative power that continues to change me from glory to glory. And I pray, Father, for every listener under my voice today that they will cherish the cross. We love you, Father. Now, church, would you please repeat this prayer after me if you mean it. Say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I need you. You're my only hope. My allegiance is in the cross of Christ. I believe, I confess, and I receive you today as my Savior and Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now receive that wonderful change. Amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Stand with me, please.